Hello, welcome back to a new video. So today, as you can see, I'm using my brand new M3 MacBook Pro. I've been using it for a few days now. And I want to show you a few tips and tricks that you can do to the MacBook to just make it a better experience. Because straight out of the box, the default Apple settings are not the most ideal settings to be using the MacBook with. And I found a few add-ons and a few little tweaks that do make it a lot better. So one of the first things I always do when I get a new Apple device is I have to disable the trackpad natural scrolling because it doesn't feel very natural when you're using an external mouse, which I do. Why would you use the trackpad? when you can plug in an external mouse, I have no idea. I never use the trackpad. So I go into settings and I go to the trackpad settings. And I turn off the natural scrolling thing. Here it is, natural scrolling. I turn that off because it's okay for phone scrolling. When you scroll down, you want it to go up. When you scroll up, you want it to go down. But with a mouse, that feels weird. So now when I scroll down on the mouse, yeah, it actually goes down when I scroll up. It goes up so that's a really good thing to do first of all okay next you really need something to do screenshots with now there is a built-in screenshot function in the MacBook but it's not very good you need to hold down like four different buttons at the same time to do a screenshot and then you can't really edit the screenshot before it gets saved to the desktop and most of the time you don't really want it to be saved to the desktop. You just want to like copy it to a clipboard, crop it, maybe draw on it, and then send it wherever you want to send it. So I found the best screenshotting app to be this one here. It's called iScreen Shoter Screenshot App, and it's really good. So once you've downloaded it, you get this little icon at the top in the menu bar and you click it and you click on the screenshot button here or you can click on text or you can even record the screen. And the screenshot shortcut is really simple. You just hold command, shift and A and then it will do like a, a crosshair thing. You drag it to choose the area that you want to screenshot like that. And then you can draw on it or draw shapes. You can like draw on it like this or put some text over it like that, or you could just draw a circle, get rid of it all as well like that. And then you press save here and it will save to desktop. But the best thing about it is you can press okay and it copies the screenshot. See, it's now copied to clipboard. And then you can just do command and V and paste it into, usually I paste it into my discord like this. See, I can just paste it into my discord and then I can press send and it doesn't really save it to the computer. You don't really want loads of different screenshotted images saved to your computer because usually it's just like a one time thing to send. Okay, so next I want to show you a really good sound system equalizer. Now, I don't really like the way the speakers sound on the MacBook straight out of the box. And this is because there's too much bass. Apple boasts about how the speakers have like 80% more bass now. And I don't think that's a good thing really. When you have too much bass, it's good for music, but when you're listening to a podcast or a video where you're trying to listen to what the person is talking about and you want the voice to be ultra clear and the clarity of the voice is the most important thing, then having all that bass is not really a great thing. And the only way you can really fiddle with the speaker equalizer is if you download some kind of app. And I got this app called Speaker Amp Booster and Equalizer. And it's actually really good. It puts this little thing on the menu bar. So you can now, don't know if you can see that. You can like choose different presets. You could do a uh, treble booster, treble reducer, vocal booster, bass reducer. I'll just zoom in quickly so you can see. You can choose different presets and you can fiddle with the frequency waves. So you can reduce the boost, I mean the bass, and then have like a much more clearer sounding vocal playback when you're watching podcasts and videos. I'll show you what it sounds like. Okay, so I moved the mic so it should be able to pick up the sound from the laptop better. Now this is what the speakers sound like usually on default. So I go into here and you can see I've got MacBook Pro speakers enabled. Have a listen. Gigabyte model. And the only 16 gigabyte model they had was like the M3 Max, which is way more expensive than what I can actually afford. So you might think that sounds okay, but now compare it to the bass reduced audio. Switch over to speaker amp speakers. So I decided to get the base model M3 over the M2 Air because, well, I did think the M2 Air looks pretty cool, but the M2 chip is like a year old now. Now, I don't know about you, but I just think that sounds way clearer. I can hear the voice much more clearer and there's less of that echoey bass sound. I'll keep switching it to show you what it sounds like. 
the brand new chip, which is the M3. And I could have waited for the M2, I mean, the M3 MacBook Air to come out this next year. But honestly, I just didn't really want to have to wait all the way until next year to MacBook Air. And I didn't want to get the M2 MacBook Air because the M2 chip is actually less powerful than the chip in my ROG Ally. The Z1 Extreme chip in this ROG Ally actually more powerful than the m2 chip so i'm not going to spend all this money to get this nice cool so yeah that's a really good way to fiddle with the way the speakers sound if you don't like how it sounds or maybe you want more bass it's a really great way you just click it you've got these presets so you can customize your own frequencies i think it's really good it's a shame apple didn't decide to add it onto the computer by default i guess they think they know the best for what we want to hear what kind of sound we like I don't like all the bass, it just sounds too echoey, I like more clear vocals. Okay, next I want to show you a really cool little tool that can show you your system monitors on the little menu bar at the top. It's very useful if you want to track your RAM usage, your CPU usage, your disk usage. It's called Usage, which is actually a very good name. <laughs> So it is called Usage System Activity Monitor. And when you've downloaded it, you get a little information at the top menu bar. So once you've downloaded it, you get this little thing at the top menu bar showing you information. And if you click on it, it will show you more information about certain things you choose. It is free to use, but you get more information if you pay for the pro version. I only have the CPU load and the disk usage, and I like to see my RAM as well. So you can click on it. And it's currently sh showing me that I'm using 6.6 .6 gigabytes of RAM and I'm using 28%, 30% of my CPU. And then if you click on it and press usage, it will show you more stuff and you can add more little widgets to the menu bar. It's really cool to track things like how much CPU you're using, how much RAM you're using, important stuff. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you a calculator. It is called Calculator Plus, if you go into the App Store and then type in Calculator Plus. This is probably the best calculator I've found so far. It's free to use. Yeah, Calculator Plus version two. Now the problem with the built-in calculator is it's just kind of rubbish. Where is it? There. So this is Apple's solution to a built-in calculator. As you can see, it's really basic. So you press like eight plus, it doesn't show you the plus symbol or the minus symbol next to it, plus eight equals 16. It doesn't show you the history of what you've just entered. So if you're doing like a really complex calculation, like you're adding up how much money you've earned to do your taxes, and you accidentally press, I don't know, 56 instead of 53, you can't delete it. You gotta delete everything and start again from the beginning. So you do like two plus three plus six plus 15 plus 25. Oh, I accidentally pressed 23. Now, what? I can't delete. I have to start all the way back from the beginning, and I don't even know what I've done. There's no history. So in comparison, Calculator Plus has all these equations, which I don't even understand how to use anyway, like sin, cos, tan. I don't know what that is. But the most important thing is you can do 7 and plus 7, and it shows you what you're doing, and then plus 6, and it'll show you answer, and you've got the history up at the top here. And if you make a mistake, like I do 820 plus 150, but I want to do 120, I can press delete like that. And then just edit the calculation without having to delete everything. It's so much better than the built-in um, Apple calculator. It's really stupid how rubbish the built-in Apple calculator is. It's so basic, it's too basic. So yeah, I really like this calculator. If you want to do long calculations, like 25, 3, 6 times 2 plus 2 plus 16, and then you get a syntax error. But what I'm saying is you can do like really long calculations, trying to add up your tax maybe, like that. You can see exactly what you've been calculating. And oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. You can even click. So imagine I made a mistake, but I made a mistake all the way back here. I can now delete that and then enter a new number there and it should change what the answer becomes. So yeah, you can click around and edit the calculation. Like maybe I want to do this as a minus instead and it'll change the outcome. So yeah, that's a really good. The problem is when you press equal, you can't uh, edit the calculation anymore. 
so you've got to be careful before you press equal yeah so it's a really good calculator app and yeah basically I think those are the most important things you want to add to your new MacBook when you've got it because these don't come default you want the calculator you want the system monitor up here so you can see what's going on see how much CPU cores are being used I've got eight cores using about 26% right now I've got six and a half gigabytes of RAM being used out of my eight gigabytes and I've got the audio thing and I've got the screenshot thing so I do control shift a do a screenshot so yeah these things really useful can't really go through my day without using these things and Apple's solution to their way of doing it by default they're not very good ways of getting it done there's more efficient ways of getting it done and it's all free so I hope that was useful thanks for watching and goodbye